Colorful caps are always in style, so grab your wildest ones, don your feather boas, because we're going to a birthday party and you're invited. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jamie Peterson, and today I'm going to show you a cool way to house a gift. We're going to be making one for my mother, whose birthday is coming up. I'm going to start by showing you how to use this cool bubble paper crimper that I found. This bubble crimper by Marvi Uchida is great because instead of wasting time embossing, I just run my papers through there and it's done. I'm going to first open up the handle like so, and then I'm going to insert my paper in between the rollers. This will take a paper up to eight and a half inches, but I don't need that size. So I'm going to just crimp the paper down and then roll the handle. And I found that this technique works best if you roll the handle back and forth. Then you're gonna make a nice deep impression. Another handy tip is to moisten the paper before you put it in and then it turns out even better. So then, when it comes out, it has this great deep impression already done for you. It's going to be perfect for my party hat portion of the tin. I'm going to now start to make the cone, which all you do is simply roll your cardstock into a cone shape. One thing that helped me out a lot is that I adhered as I rolled because this cardstock is rather thick and it has a tendency to pop open if you don't adhere it. So I'm going to show you what one looks like. You'll see that the edges are uneven and there's a flap, which we're just going to snip off. And make sure that we have a somewhat even line around. It doesn't have to be perfect though. Let me show you what a finished one looks like. Here, we're ready to now embellish it. I'm going to use this cool clever lever paper punch that I found, which is going to cut this paper just like butter. Usually, I have a hard time with this, but it's very easy. And it even catches my star punch for me. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of shimmer to my star using my silver calligraphy pen from Marvi Uchida. I love them because they're so juicy and they leave a great shine. I'm just going to trace around the edges of the star. This is a fun project. Let me just finish this and that's it. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and I'm also going to pick up my straight pin that I just had laying around. In this case, I'm gonna use my home decor markers from Marvi Uchida. I love these because they come in great colors and they're easy to use on any surface. I'm gonna use pink for this project. Get it nice and juicy and simply roll the pin head around the marker until it's completely covered. Just take seconds and it's gonna make a lot of difference in the finished product. I'm also gonna set this one aside to dry and you can see I now have my star and my pin ready to go. I just simply insert the pin through the star, bring back my cap, and punch it through the top. And how cute is that? Now, I'm gonna wanna cut another one to cover up this smudge I made. And I simply insert the second one into the top. Now I have a matching pair. It's even cuter. But it's still not complete. So I want to add my pretty, pretty princess ribbons which I've cut and inserted another straight pin and that's just going to go through the top there like that. And you'll wanna probably add some adhesive so that that stays in place. Now, we're ready to move on to our head portion. I've bought this wooden ball at my craft store. Now I'm gonna to wanna to use my garden craft markers. They dry quickly and provide great coverage. Let's go with black today, I think that's fun. I'm gonna mix it up and get it juicy and start to paint. Now this is so great because it's literally going to take me only minutes to cover the surface of this big ball. And look how quickly that dries. It's perfect for this project. I happen to have a completed one done. Let me show you what it looks like. Peachy, and it only took a couple of seconds. Next, we're ready for our face portion. 
I found this adorable picture of my mother when she was a baby. I love this picture because of her demure little pose and the mischievous look in her eye. I think it's hilarious. I've added some pink ink onto her cheeks just for a little bit of color. Now I had an issue with this because the ball is round and the paper is flat. So if you try to put them together, it's gonna crinkle and look yucky. So here's my secret. I took a scrap of black craft foam and just adhered it underneath her face. When you cut it out, it's going to look like this. And you're gonna have a sturdy background that you can work with. I want to run some dry adhesive across the middle about ear to ear. And this is going to be the only portion of the face that's actually stuck to the ball. It goes right across just like that. Now, you'll notice I have a neck gap and a head gap, but we're gonna cover that up so no one will even notice. The first thing that you'll need is a piece of frilly ribbon, which I have dry adhesive on the back of. This is going to go around the neck portion as a little tiny collar. And that way you can barely notice that gap at all. And now we can add the hat that we already decorated and look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? She's the cutest thing ever. I've added the lace at the bottom and I've also covered up that rough edge on our cone hat with some more ribbon. Now we're gonna move on to the top of our tin. We're gonna use that cool bubble crimper that I showed you earlier, and we're gonna do the same thing, this time on a strip of vellum, which I've cut to about two inches, and close it down, and twist and turn, and you are done. Now, this is a great impression. It's got a few little crinkles in it, but don't worry about that. That's gonna add to our texture and our design in just a second. Now, I wanna add a little bit of color, so I'm gonna bring back my home decor marker and start to trace around the lines of the bubbles. Don't worry about being perfect with this. It's definitely not supposed to be perfect. It's just quick and easy to add a little bit of color. I have one finish that I'll show you, like so. Now, the fun part of this is we're gonna add a little bit of sheen to it with some wire rimmed ribbon. I've also added adhesive to this, and I'm simply going to stick the vellum to the ribbon, like so. Easy and fun. And now I'm going to show you how to make the pleats of the collar. This is gonna be so easy with this wire rimmed ribbon. All I have to do is start to make folds, and I'm going to fold not only the ribbon, but the paper as well. And you want to go about every half inch or so. It's not a perfect process, so don't worry about getting out the measuring type. And you're going to continue all the way along the, the length of the ribbon. And we're going to do this around the top of our tin, just like so. Run some dry adhesive along the bottom edge. And all I'm gonna do is line up the edge of the ribbon with the edge of the tin. Now you'll notice it's going to take one more strip of this paper ribbon to complete the top. But once you have all your pieces in place, simply add another line of adhesive and lay this flat. I'll show you our finished piece over here. We've also added a matching round of ribbon that's going to blend right into this collar, put some glue on the bottom of your ball, and your top is done. It's so cute and no one's ever gonna know you only spent 10 minutes on it. Now we have only one more piece left to deal with and that's the bottom of the tin. And this is gonna be really simple too. I'm gonna bring back my home decor marker and make little swirls all along the bottom of the tin, just like that. And this marker is great because it's gonna work on metal. You saw it worked on vellum. It's gonna work on any kind of surface. Now you can see the finished piece has the home decor marker swirls, and I've also brought back our silver calligraphy pen to add some confetti. This is gonna be a great gift housing for my mother, but I can't tell you what the gift is yet because she's watching, I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. Pop the lid on there and you're ready to go. But this isn't just for birthdays. Let me show you what else I made. 
As you can see, there's many ways to do this project. I've also made this spring fling edition for my new neighbors as a housewarming present. And of course, we have to have our Christmas edition. This is gonna house my Christmas cookies in just a few months. Now these sweet treats were fun and easy to make and you can do this at home. Just raid your cabinets and transform your tins into sweet little trinkets. I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, Download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.